Hello, cadets. Hello, 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 let's wait for some people to get in here. I am so excited I got this new, like, font down. Yes, Stream Elements is online. Oh, gotta love it. Oh, gotta love it. We are now live. And wait for some lovely people to show up, because, like, we got Pippa, we got Stream Elements. We got so much going on here. Hello everyone, you're probably wondering what the heck. Uh, another thing I wanna bring up in the near future, like, Where there's gonna be a huge new, um, like, lore dump video coming out on the main channel and all that. So that's gonna be fun to look at. It's gonna be fun to watch, for y'all to watch. Uh, so, ye. I am actually looking forward to playing Power World today. A lot of changes have been happening. So the rules have been updated. Like, the purpose of the streaming has been updated in a fictional sense. You also see, like, oh, the media links down here. You see, like, the new uh, barrier font. New, new, new everywhere, other than my VTuber. Except when it comes to the eye. You also see the cups on a hoster now. You also see like this hologram projection over here where like, oh, y'all can now see your like, where y'all can chat. Like y'all can chitty chat. Like, I will admit like you can do stream attacks, of course. Like y'all can chitty chat. And all that. Like, there is so much that I've been working on because, like, you got viewer attack now, you got sound, I've got sound alerts up, and, yeah, stream elements is finally back up, meaning bits can be e bitty bitted and donations and all that. I am so excited, so many things are changing, and uh, believe it or not, this was... Rachel had to hold my hand through all this. Like, what the heck? I will admit, she had to hold my hand through all this and guide me through it. Like, she had to be my guiding hand on how, how I'll do set up stream elements and all that, and that was, that was a pain, that was a pain. So I hope you're ready for this, because like, I certainly am. As ye. So, oh, I've got a headphone set on, you know, just in case, like, anything happens in the stream. But the set on that happening with stream elements, if anybody follows, like, there will be certain sound effects happening and all that. But the set on that happening with stream elements, if anybody follows, like, there will be. I will mention that, and all that. other than this, like, there's more yet to come. So y'all can do subscription donations. Y'all can do, like, bit donations and all that. There's so much more that's coming on the way. I'm just finally getting around to doing this because, like, you know, push comes to shove, something's got to break. And it's not going to be me, dang it. So the new background... Is the reason why I'm late today. And you see the tip jar, of course. And the hologram, um, obviously, e chat box right here. Right here. Right here. You see it right here. Mm, love it. Love it. Got this little hologram box. All right. So we're going to get to the gameplay here in a minute. Let me just upload the media source. And I'll end up uploading, I mean, activating like Power World and doing some rearranging, if you excuse me. Why is this not showing? Hold on. Choose.
Where is that video? Ah! Now that's video capture, video capture, media source. Choose your display capture. Nope. Wrong one. You guess what? Choose your VTuber. Remember. Choose your VTuber. Remember. Never mind. Fine. Okay, so I found the media source. And I just gotta move it up. Don't get used to this. Choose your VTuber. Remember. Never mind. Fine. Okay. Regretta of Marjorie. Alright, so allow me to this media source. Yes, that is mine, Rachel's bat bedroom you see there. Like, gotta move the tip jar a bit more. We're gonna move it over here. Alright. Come on, Power World Load. Hi. Loaded in the wrong screen again. All right, we're here live on Power. Let's go. Like I say, there is a problem with the game audio. Hold on, I will appropriate it. Where you can hear some of it. All right, so last night there was a RoboCop live stream for the PC. It was really laggy. That's because of like. Obviously, the graphics was a little bit too heavy. So we got level 50 Power World. Yippee! Of course, I got my hands in my pockets. So I can finally make Lat Steel. And we can make the Plat Steel Armor. We can also make the homing rocket, the homing spear launcher. Uh, that's good. Like, we can't make the mounted missile launcher yet. That'll be fun when we can. Uh, full resistant armor. Like, there's still a lot of stuff we didn't normally unlock, but we're gonna try to do some of that today. Oh, my shield's down. So, to achieve this, last night, like, no joke, no scam, I had to go to the new region and just start blasting stuff. We're gonna get our dragon friend out. We're gonna get our giant sea serpent friend out so he can... Oh, done. Him. Oh my god. Bro. Work. Oh wait, we have no power. Generators drain. Don't worry, sir, just got this covered. Does it take that long to cook? Good. Oh, 
Oh, he must be hungry. See, he was hungry. He was hungry. Now he's gonna get back to work. All right. So let's see, like, what's it gonna take to make this fat steel armor? Cause, like, that's the new armor, and. Let's see here, plat steel 50, platinum get. oh, we got the cloth, so. We're gonna have to get some, uh, up done. Look at you go. So let's double check what takes the plat steel armor. So we got the crew, we need ore. We're gonna need a whole ton load of ore. All right, no prob. We're just gonna work our way up getting this orb. We're gonna do the grind. We're gonna get the plat steel armor today. Well, I should get my turtle friend out. Now uh, you should be able to have this work go by faster. Let's see. Alright, where's our turtle friend at? Slash! I got a job for you. Start slash. No, 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 no. That one. That one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get this ore out. Let's start mining this ore. We need to get the plat steel armor today, of course. Rachel's gonna be around um, five and start talking uh, about the good parts of my childhood that I literally asked her to do. She's gonna put her own spin on it because, like, she wants to do her own thing about it. Her old job used to be a psychiatrist. And, like, how do I get to know a girl, that, a, a woman that was once a psychiatrist? I have no freaking clue. I mean, I guess I should mention how I met her. Like, it was about five, maybe six weeks ago. That the woman behind Rachel, I met her at a bar, right? I went to a new bar about six, seven weeks ago. Almost two months. And this was a biker bar, all right? So, like, I just got done visiting my doctor's office. And I just wanted to grab a quick soda, right? So I'll walk in here. I go like, huh. I know I shouldn't be in here. This is a biker bar. This is a biker titty bar. But at the same time, screw it. You know, I'm an adult. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So I walk up to the bar and I grab a drink. There's these two chicks. Like, I cannot remember their names. Along with the woman behind Rachel. So there's three girls. And the two chicks were very cocky. Um, the woman behind Rachel, she was very meek and silent. She looked like she wanted to be there just to drink and not really chat. So I'll walk up there. I'm soaked in sweat because of, like, the heat and everything. Like, I don't know what to tell you. When it comes to heat, like, out here where I live, like, the heat is the heat, man. 
Okay, that's the heat is the heat is the heat. And it will burn you alive if you are not careful. Like, holy crud. So I ended up, like, obviously, like, going in there. And I wanted to get a Dr. Er, Thunder Pip, is how I'm going to call it from now on. A Dr. TP, as we're going to call it for short. Because I do not want to call it by its accurate name. Just because I had a fear of, like, oh, the company is going to, like, do some shit. So, I'm just going to give it a mixture of three different sodas that nearly have the same taste. We're going to call it Dr. TP. So, Dr. TP, I go in there, like, I end up getting this frosty mug, right? And, like, it's a frosty beer mug full of Dr. TP. I go, I start drinking this thing. And, like, it's a good, like, I think it was a 24-ounce cup. And I bet I just went chugging this whole thing down. Like, because I was so freaking thirsty and hot. Like, I barely breathed when drinking this, like, through my nose. Because, like, I just wanted something big and cold and, and like, caffeine-filled to get me back to my uh, humble abode. So I ended up drinking this entire thing down. And I ended up putting it down. And then these biker guys start walking over, hitting on these girls, right? And like, it had nothing to do with me, right? Until one of them walked over to me, one of the guys go like, Hey, why aren't you hitting on these cute chicks? I go like, Do you have no class? I literally tell this man, Do you have no class? I said, obviously, these girls are younger than you. And you look somewhere around in your 50s or 60s, man. Like, literally know your place. And one of the girls of Rachel's friends ended up going like, Hey, it's okay. We don't mind. I know the man hitting on us. I go like, You do know what uh, bikers do with chicks, right? Especially younger ones. And this biker was a hell's angel. And he was like, I don't need to know that. How do you even know that? I go, I may look young, but I'm not that stupid. Because I grew up with a, a stepfather that actually worked in law enforcement and drove around with these guys for a while before then. Like, he had his rowdy years. So, I go like, in retrospect, maybe it'd be a good idea, fella, if you know, like, to stay in your age range. Like, these girls don't even know what y'all do and how y'all do it. Of course, like, this ended up taking off the biker and his crew. Like, holy crud, were they mad. Right? They go like, they don't need to know our ways. I go like, I think they kind of do. Because I think that they don't even know how all over the, like, how much trouble they can get in just talking to you fellas. They go, they don't need to know that. And I realized, yeah, these guys were hitting on these girls just because they wanted some easy poon tang to sell. Alright? Bikers, like, there's a huge majority of them just love selling, like, girls for, like, I I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They like pimping out girls to other bikers. All right, nah. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna sugarcoat this. Bikers, big time bikers, like in the Hell's Angels and all that. Nah, they like selling chicks for one reason: for easy money. They do this stuff. Like it's disgusting, right? It's always been disgusting in my eyes. Why they do this stuff? It's so criminalistic, right? 
So, these bikers were getting ticked at me. They go, you better freaking leave before we break your neck. I go, think that's going to scare me? So, I ended up grabbing, not the handle, but uh, the round cylinder of the glass. I said, you better watch yourself. Or this will be your fucking skull. It goes tough top for um, a little brat. I go, watch and learn. As I end up breaking this beer mug. Like, this ain't your average like, plastic beer mug. It was pure glass. I broke it with my hand. And luckily I had, like, my gamer gloves on. Because if I didn't, like, that thing was literally gonna uh, cut up my hand. Like, my gamer gloves got in, uh, like, uh, laced in, like, freaking rubber in it. So, I ended up, like, breaking the glass with one hand. I go, now, do you want to continue this argument? Or do you want me to fracture your skull like I just broke that glass? He said... I'm gonna put a bullet where your brain is. I said, do it. Do it, you sorry son of a gun. And I will literally finally get the vacation I need. You think death freaking scares me? I need that vacation. Like, I, the guy goes like, who hurt you and why? I go like, you have no clue and you never will. I'll never give you that right. So, I ended up, uh, like, telling off this biker and his fellas. Ended up backing off the girls. Alright? Now, what I did was severely stupid. I could have easily died that day. But I did it because I wanted to make sure these chicks were safe. I mean, that's the thing for the police. But at the same time, there was no police in a biker bar. There is never police in a biker bar. They are never anywhere to be found in there, alright? So, I end up owning these guys. And chasing them off. Well, not chasing them off, but uh, in a way, just telling them, like, back the frick off, you know, like, girls like this don't need to be into your shit. And it was the girl that would become Rachel ended up saying, hey, uh, Thanks for all that. Those guys were real creeps. I go, and it's no problem. My friends aren't very smart. They're younger than me. And I go like, really? I couldn't tell. And the girl behind Rachel ended up laughing. And she ended up laughing at that. <laughs> she said, I can't figure you out. Are you just completely vulgar or just hilarious? I said, I've been called some things, I've been called the other. <laughs> I've been accused of being an a-hole, I've been accused of being a straight guy. Like, I've even been accused of being called gay! Because I know gay people. Like, I've been accused of being a transgender! Because I know transgender people, like, what the frick is wrong with this world? <laughs> no, like, I know, like, a lot of people, alright? And to, like, these other people, like, that's weird, right? Knowing, like, all these, these types of different individuals. And it's not considered, like, the norm to know, right? At least in their eyes. And I'm like, 
World's changing. You guys either need to change with it or just die like the dinosaurs. That did not get me any favors that day. Oh. Like with those bikers. Now the bikers were mad at me. Like this wasn't like a biker mice from Mars moment. If it was, that would be kind of cool. No, this is like a biker or death from, uh, of dance from Earth moment. And they were so ticked at me. I will have some more plat steel made here in a minute. I'll have her start soaking that. Uh, upgrading her abilities a bit. So... Like, some of the shit I do in real life, I would highly advise y'all not doing. Because you will die. Alright, like... I make a lot of dumbass mistakes. And talk about it with you people so you don't have to. If that makes any sense to y'all, good. That's all I gotta say with that. If that makes any sense, y'all, at least y'all are like understanding some things about me. It's some of the crazy stuff I've gotten into ever since moving out on my own. I know I shouldn't be talking to y'all like this. Let y'all know these things. But I kind of talk about these things because, like, obviously, it helps y'all, it helps me grow. Like, we're on this journey together, not only as streamers, but I want to let y'all know that. The world can only be a scary place if you let it. And... I was told for the longest time that the world would literally destroy me. By my, my parents, alright? But... When it comes to what I'm going through right now, my parents have always taught me growing up that nobody would like me, nobody would respect me, nobody would understand me, and like even give me a chance. Just to be like happy or normal. I love my mother, I love my stepfather, my biological father, I don't know much about him. Um don't know what happened to him. We haven't been in contact since I was like seven. Or at least like 18 when I tried to reconnect with the guy. And that's a whole nother story for another day. I will have to say this. Like, my biological father is a piece of work. And I hope that y'all, like, I hope that I never have to go into great detail about talking about him. Good 
Because y'all will have even greater, like, nightmares if I talk about that man. And it will not be a comfortable time. If I have to talk about my biological father, y'all will cringe so hard in a negative way of the sauce. He is a whole nother subhuman of being. He may have, like, brought me, help bring me into this world, but he may have been a daddy, but he was no father. Alright, like, he may have been a daddy, but he was no father. Become daddies, and then there are men that are fathers. And some fathers are fathers, some daddies are daddies. And sometimes they are neither. We're getting the an obviously new A team ready. Lighting the torches. You know what? I might as well get rid of these torches. Replace them with something more efficient. Destroy that whole wall. Tear that in a second. That's the last of the torches. I think that was the last of them. Get to repairing those walls. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna rearrange this a bit so they can get to the uh, area easier. Oh, 
freaking love this thing. Look how hard I know this works. Okay, now we're all that done. Something else I want to do. Need a second line of defense? Over here. Cause like a lot of the Palmon come from this area when they attack. So what we're gonna end up doing? We're gonna put up a battle station. there in a strategic manner. Because there's four places, well, three places where, like, the enemies invade. troublesome so let's see what we need doing is making some stairs. Now what we need to do... So we're going to have a machine gun platform here. And the Palmon will be able to fight off invaders from up here. Rifle ammo. I wish I had some pizza right now. Freaking sweet. On the tummy. I haven't had breakfast yet this morning. Or technically this afternoon. So we got the machine gun up there.
That's nice. I guess what we need to do is make an ammo box. X. Why not? I'm getting nation bait. <laughs> and we're gonna end up taking all the rifle ammo we have. Rifle ammo. So, rifle ammo. The visitor is heading towards the base. I say, I want this guy to die again. Better go save him just in case. That was a lot of stuff. Gotta be a nest around here, right? Oh, they be rolling. Oh. All oh, them poor little sheeples be rolling. Oh. need some milkies we do we need that eggs thank you so much Oh, and I did get, like, how much my, uh, weight, how much weight I can carry again. Uh, I ran into a drop yesterday that allowed me to, uh, increase the amount of weight by at least 200. So I ran into two more, like, burden elixirs. That was fun. Get all this stuff planted and watered. Grow some fresh ingredients. Look at you go, little one. Look at you go. Get the wheat going. Get the 
Lettuce patch. Something just got done growing. I guess it was berries. Let's see here. Like, I want to keep this stream going on until, like, why not maybe 3, 3.30-ish? And, like, Rachel's gonna come around, like, 5, 6 o'clock when, like, she actually gets off her job. FYI, the woman behind Rachel and me are not actually a thing. She's a heavy drinker, and I'm not into women that are heavy drinkers. Like, maybe, like, light drinkers or, you know, sometime drinkers. Like, that makes any sense. Or, like, very, very light drinkers, maybe. But heavy time drinkers, like, I'm really not into. Like, that that's a bit of a turnoff for me. Like, if women drink so heavily, like, it's a chemical dependency or, like... You know, like, they consider it like, oh, they're modern hobby. Like, that—that that is a huge turnoff for me with, like, ladies, so I do have a lot of standards. I bring this up, by the way, because when I first met the woman behind Rachel in that bar that day, like, she was so impressed with, like, what I did. But at the same time, she was, like, so freaking horrified that they were going to kick my ass afterwards. Um, we met at that bar that day, and she ended up finding out that I was a massive nerd. And she ended up finding me at Walmart, of all places. Because she was doing grocery shopping one day. I was doing grocery shopping. We were both doing grocery sh shopping. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's when I got my food stamps in, and we met again. And yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we met and she's like, hey, can I buy you lunch? And I go like, don't break yourself trying to do it. And she's, she was like, nah, never. And so we went out to lunch and I'm like, we went somewhere simple. We went to a buffet. Like the biggest buffet restaurant in town. We got to talking and, and she noticed something. As I was messing around on my phone, she noticed I was messing with Twitter after she got a plate of food, right? She goes, why do you go around on Twitter? Why do you mess with that? I go, all oh, right. Uh, wow, caught red-handed, huh? I'm a streamer. She goes, what kind of streamer? So like not her her eyes lighted up with that like what kind of streamer I'm like oh crunch she's in the streamers <laughs> No that got me a bit worried And like I know like I'm a VTuber She goes like what kind of VTuber I go mommy <laughs> I'm gone done did it now no, because, like, she's got a fascination with streamers. And she always wondered, like, you know, if she can ever do it again. And I said, always a possibility. Just gotta have a tougher skin and not let people, like, try to cancel you over it. And she ended up asking, like, think you can teach me that tougher skin? I go, pen. How tough do you want it? <laughs> she ended up laughing, and so did I. No, she has like a, she has such an adorable laugh when she's in a good mood. Uh, 
But no, like, this, this lady, like, she's a good friend now. Like, I want her to remain a friend. Simply because out of respect, you know? Actually, a really good person. And it'd be a, it would mean a lot to me if y'all treat her with like kindness and respect. Doesn't mean y'all have it though. Far from it. Y'all have been like straight up like good cadets so far. And watch my uh, streams. It's just YouTube's the unruly bunch. <laughs> All they see, like, oh, a new, ooh, like, a VTuber streamer on the Commander's streams. Well, gotta cancel him for that shit. <laughs> I mean, YouTube is brutal. Like, people on there are so freaking brutal. They do not care who you are, where you cr come from, and why you're doing it. They're just freaking brutal on that platform. I wonder if they'll add a recipe for fried tomatoes in the future. Power went out. Damn it. Lights back on. Yeah, we're gonna have one of those big giant generators in like four of those small ones just to keep up the power in this place. Like, it's really gonna be needed for that. I'm gonna be, you know, remaking the entire power gate area around it. Would I do that? Man, tomatoes take nothing to plant now. day as well. Like, I want to talk about my days as I've been, like, doing all this recently, and I recently went to a GameStop. <gasps> yes! The commander went to a GameStop! No, shut up, like, obviously. Hey, I got a friend that works there. Um, he's also the judge at the tournaments, okay? So, like, he's a cool guy, but, <laughs> you know, he's a judge. Go figure, huh? <laughs> the commander knows a judge in gaming? How dare you! <laughs> uh, no, like... Uh, yeah, so... This guy works at a GameStop, and... We gotta talk about, like, some games and stuff. Like, what about we gotta talk about, uh, like, the new, like, Assassin's Creed game, right? And he, he called the new... Like the retainer and actual samurai like i don't know the guy's name all i know is according to history he was a retainer he wasn't a samurai i repeat he was not a samurai from like all history that i like my father has taught me from japanese history because like he was over there in the country deployed for three years in the air force 
All right, so he spent three years in Japan. And according to the research he got on this guy, like, this guy's a retainer. He was not a samurai. I repeat, this guy's not a traditional samurai. He was a retainer for a samurai. The difference between a retainer and an actual samurai, a retainer is someone that serves a samurai or a general or a warlord or something like that. And the samurai are like the Japanese military. That is what a retainer is. He is somebody that retains like equipment or armor, armor or like stuff like that. He retains the stuff for the general, I believe. I could be entirely wrong on that. But a retainer is, according to what I know, like, in Japanese history, they retain uh, certain responsibilities and equipment for, like, their master. That doesn't mean this guy was a, um, an SL. Far from it, I'm afraid. He first started out as one, but eventually he got so much love and respect that he became a honorary retainer for a samurai general. There is a difference between a retainer and an actual samurai. Their positions in the, the old ways of the country. And this is, this is like medieval Japan stuff we're talking about here. And I know this is going to get like a lot of people like heated and angry at me talking about like retainers and like his Japanese history and all that. But look, if the Yu-Gi-Oh community can't cancel me, if y'all can't cancel me, if, I, if people on the streets can't cancel me, what chances are a bunch of like misguided historians are going to cancel me? Like I am that stubborn of an individual. I am stubborn as hell. There's no way y'all are gonna cancel me if I'm that fucking stubborn. But, this guy was a retainer. I do not know his name. I cannot remember it. All I know is, he started out as like a bot servant, as we're gonna call him. He was like bought out to be a servant. Like a forced servant. Bought by money. And he was, was eventually became that of a retainer for a famous warlord, samurai warlord. He is not the traditional samurai in the traditional sense. Like, I don't know where y'all got that information. Oh, he's a samurai. He is not traditionally a samurai. He is a retainer for a samurai. Doesn't mean he did not follow the Bushido code. Doesn't mean that he did not wield a katana. Doesn't mean he didn't wield a naginata. Doesn't mean he didn't wield uh, like any other like, uh, like samurai armory such as bows and arrows and all that. Doesn't mean he wasn't trained in it. Because retainers have to be trained in that stuff of to protect their samurai warlord. Alright? Like, they have to do that. They have to do that. They have to be taught that. And it is a part of their training. It's always a part of the, uh, like, retainers training. To learn how to be, like, a proper samurai. Well, at least a proper retainer, my mistake. Like, a retainer for a samurai. They have to learn the code, the way of the Bushido. They have to learn the way of honor and dignity of the Japanese people. That's how, that's what a retainer -er has to have one of the many qualifications for. They also have to retain and honor their, like, master's code and their own. There, there is a lot of responsibilities for being a retainer that I can't go into accurately. I'm not that well diverse in Japanese, like, historian knowledge to go into all that. 
All I know is a few bits and pieces. But the individual that's claiming like he's a samurai, like... You're not very smart, are you? You, you may have like a freaking like... A PhD in like Japanese history. But it's probably given to you like by a fucking 13 year old. Like, I don't care who that guy is, like, the person that gave him his PhD in Japanese history was probably a freaking 13 year old. I'm saying it right here and right now. Guy was given a PhD by a 13 year old. That's my headcanon. 13 year old gave him his head his uh, PhD. Or you probably just bought it offline. Like, anybody can literally just buy a PhD offline, copy and replicate it. Like, that's the truth, actually. Anybody can do that. Anybody can just copy and paste one of those things. Or create one from scratch. It's considered illegal in some, like, states or even countries to do that. But... <laughs> Uh, I'm not willing to go to prison over that stuff. Like, that's freaking stupid. Like, whoever gave this guy a PhD in Japanese history needs to pull it out of his panties. Okay, like, they need to take it away from this guy. Doesn't mean that you have a PhD means you're smart and always correct. Like, what the heck, dude? I mean, I can go around saying, Oh, I have a PhD in kicking ass! And show a piece of paper I'm showing a PhD in kicking ass! But, <laughs> doesn't mean it's real! Kind of like this moron that says, oh, I got a PhD in Japanese literature. And yet, we've never seen it. And he's never talked about what, I guess it's like public knowledge of where he went. But we've never seen his PhD in Japanese literature. Come on, dude. Be a man. Show us your PhD. Show us that it's a real deal. FYI, it's probably not. <laughs> Like, I like going on these little tangents. Because, like, it really shows how smarter I am compared to most people. It definitely shows the amount of brain power I have compared to, like, most individuals. I don't know why. I just, I just have this, okay? Like, boy. I just have this brain power that I need to flex from time to time. Good power. Alright. Got some more palladium ignigates. How much does that make? Just how much before that armor is complete? Hold on, let me look into this. Yeah, we just need nine more. Means we're gonna have to turn some stones into the palm on fragments. We'll grab that ore here in a second, because, like, he is been looking like this. Look at this turtle go! We're gonna redirect this bridge. Up 
that way. Alright, can't do it. There we go, that's better. Yeah, we'll get the cook in some more food here in a minute. I need a E2. Better refresh those ingredients. Nah, what I want to learn. Refresh. And we're gonna have our water friend literally like Wapa. I'm literally just gonna call her something else here in a minute. Lena? Luna? Yuna? Like, I, uh, what? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, like, I want her name to start with L because, like, she gives off, like, that L type vibe name for the Palmon. Lunata! Oh, I like that. Okay, like Lunata. You're Lunata now. We got Surge, we got Phantom Rose, we got Alpha 9, Lunata, and Griver. Lunata! Get to work. Just need a couple more of those. Obviously, I really do like, like this game. So we ended up talking about, like, at that GameStop, that game, and, like, a Mad NFL guy came in there, like, I, I do not care for sports. But they heard, like, a lot of good things about, like, this college football game, and I go, like, in my brain, like, okay, college football, whatnot, whatever. Uh, I ended up seeing a, seeing a couple of other games on the screen, too. Oh, uh, one of them has to do with, like, uh, the chicks that literally get trapped in, like, a... I think it's, like, a deep underground cavern with all these, like, female monsters. 
That's actually coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and Xbox 360. That's an indie game. And I think that's freaking wonderful. Like, that game's been on Steam for the longest time. And it's about time it came out, you know, like, for or on other platforms. Like, Helen, yes. Helen, yes, that thing starts coming out on other platforms. Okay, like, right now, when it comes to, like, indie game development, they are literally saving the day. These big end name companies have been failing all of us left and right. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Other than they have been completely and utterly failing everyone left and right. And, like, I'm a gamer, right? I don't like to talk about this stuff because, like, oh, it sounds really messed up, right? That's because it is! It is so messed up when indies are doing a better job. And professional game developers. Do you know when you mess up as a game company? So bad that uh, uh, no one respects you anymore? It's when indies ended up replacing you as competent game developers. Like, that is a rare occasion where, like, big corporate gaming industries get so corrupt and, well, it's not really rare, actually. It's quite commonplace. Where they become so corrupt and greedy that they end up obviously destroying their own image and they, and they try to recover it with, like, really, really Horrible messed up games. Thinking, oh, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. We're literally going to look at one of the greatest developers once again. But then when they realize the game didn't live up to performance, they start blaming the people instead of actually looking in their own freaking house and realizing where they fucked up. Game developers screw up like this all the time. They mess up like this all the time. It is not normal or commonplace. Like, it is quite normally known that game developers mess up so much. And when they do mess up and we call them out for their bull crud, like all of these like in, like game journalists and all this kind of stuff and game interviewers, like blame us for being too picky. What goes through my mind is like, okay, who hit you with the stupid stick and why? Is what goes through my head. Right? Like, these people are supposed to report on, like, video games, right? I get that. I get that. They're not supposed to report on the freaking customers. Your job is to report on the video game, not the customer base. As a matter of fact, the customer base is really, like, truthfully, everyone, when it comes to your customer base, when you're making a video game or a product, that's for the business to worry about. That is for the business to worry about and not the freaking news reporters. Like, the news journalists that cover video games, that's not their job. Like, I'm going to say it right here and now, what a news journalist's job is supposed to be. Is covering how good the game is. What it's capable of doing. Basically, the uh, niches and the quiches of the game. Basically saying, oh, what's good, what's bad, you know, like... 
you know, what's marvelous, what's horrible, oh, you know, like, what it's capable of doing, what the story mode's like, that's their job. It's not to give their political views or guidelines on the game situation, like game development or like, you know, the story. Like, they're not supposed to put like a religious, racist, government or like views on that. Like, I can understand like historical knowledge is important. Researching into a video game. But when your historical knowledge is so freaking incorrect, What's the point? What's the point of being a news journalist if you can't get the news right? Is my issue. If they can't get the news right, don't do the news at all. Maybe that's me being a little bit too harsh. But at the same time, it's the goddamn truth. You have a job to do. You either do it or you don't do it at all. The frick is wrong with these people? I'll tell you what's wrong. Um, these are a bunch of freaking retards trying to come off like mad geniuses trying to destroy an industry because they don't see any good from it anymore. That's the truth. Each one of these professional big time game journalists, their issue is they don't see the game industry as innovative or creative anymore or original. My thoughts on that is, you're freaking dumb. Games are changing all the time. Graphics are upgrading. Systems are becoming better. PCs are leading the master race of gaming these days. Like, I don't know what to tell y'all other than like, news journalists. What are what are game journalists anymore? Game journalists, what are they? Racist bigots against gaming. That's what they are. They are racist bigots against gaming. They are bigots against gaming. And they put in racist tendencies to try to get their agenda across. That freaking sickens me to my core. When news journalists lose their purpose, that sickens me to my very core. Still need two of those before I bring you that. Let's see here. At least when I make a mistake, I try to make up for it. When they made a mistake, they doubled down on the mistakes. Oh, we can now create it. Yes. Uh. Alpha. Let's get it to make it a new power armor. <laughs> we can love this. I look like an Iron Man. <laughs> Freaking Iron Man! Look at this shit! Oh my god! No, I'm literally Iron Man right now. I, I just look like Art. I look like Mega Man X, except all in silver. Oh my god, I look like Mega Man X in this! Oh, that is, that is awesome. Like, I look like a Palmon Mega Man X. Oh, that is cool. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is so cool. Look at this. I look 
like a power bomb Mega Man X. Probably gonna piss off some Mega Man X fans compared to that, but you know what? Fuck it, it's funny. <laughs> no, like, Mega Man X fans are so freaking pissed with- Mega Man fans are so freaking pissed with me lately, like, fuck it, like... No, I'm gonna double down on just pissing them off. Because they're gonna continue to treat me the way they are, you're like, I'm just gonna double down on pissing them off. Like, I don't know what to tell y'all. Like, I'm gonna do that shit now. Now, if they're gonna keep disrespecting me, I'm gonna keep disrespecting them. I'm still playing the Mega Man games. I wanna talk about that right quick, too, because, like... What the frick is wrong with these people? I sent the, uh, you know, information to Shadow Rock. He has not answered me back. He's not going to answer me back is the issue. Like this man, that's man, that man, Shadow Rock ZX. Like he has proven his point now, like without a shadow of a doubt, he is a man that does not want peace. All right. Like I sent that ad more than 24 hours ago. You think he would have answered by now, right? Like, you think this guy would want peace? You think he would want peace and harmony between us? Like, me and him, right? You normally would think that. Until he still keeps ignoring, like, my, ch my offers for, like, peace between us. He keeps ignoring it, showing his ignorance and neglect and disrespect, not only to like me, not only to all of you, but like Mega Man as a whole. Like, let alone Doctor's Light stream of wanting peace and coexistence, right? He is definitely showing his true tendencies of like, how this guy doesn't want peace between us. And that sends me, makes me upset that he's like this. I want peace between us. Like, I, I don't want us to be at each other like this. But when he's constantly like this, like, people are constantly like this. It shows what they're truly like. How they literally just don't care about things like peace and dignity and honor and like how to resolve one's issues. Like this guy doesn't want our issues resolved. I get that now. He doesn't want anything resolved. He doesn't want to fix things. He doesn't want to make things right with me. I want to make things right with him, right? I do. But it seems he doesn't. And when people are like this, especially Shadow Rock ZX, all you can wonder is like, what is wrong with this person? I tell you what's wrong with Shadow Rock ZX. He's closed himself off from things such as reason and peace. He's someone that doesn't want peace or reason. I would say he wouldn't want war. I'm just saying that he's an individual that can literally care less of a peaceful resolution. <laughs> and 
And that does kind of sadden me. That this man doesn't want any peace between us. I can't force peace. Like, that's not how peace works. You don't force peace onto another. You gotta work out your differences and achieve a level of calm and peace to achieve peace. But you gotta get the talking, you gotta make a treaty, you gotta have peace talks, all that kind of stuff, to literally find a common ground. It seems Shadow Rock, in his mind, he doesn't want a common ground, he doesn't want peace. He doesn't want coexistence between me and him. And all of you, and them with all of us. With all of his community that he has, and like the community I'm building with. And it saves his lack there of wanting coexistence and peace. It is a major liar issue with him as a human. Like, him as a person, if he doesn't want peace, he should straight out just say it. He should just say it or something. Like, I don't want peace with you, right? I don't want coexistence. I don't want this. He should say that. And he's straight to say that in some way, shape, or form. But he's not going to. Because he knows that uh, if he says that, like, people are going to pick apart art saying he's weak. You're not weak when you want peace and coexistence. As a matter of fact, that makes you stronger than anyone else. That makes you a strong, kind individual. For Shadow Rock not wanting peace and coexistence between me and him and like our community, like the communities we're working on, it definitely shows there of a lack there of due diligence and willing to forgive. Due diligence, willing to forgive. And it definitely shows he doesn't care for second chances. This is a guy that can literally care less about second chances. And... I opened up the opportunity for peace. Like, I was the big man, right? I was the first one to open up an opportunity for peace. He shows he doesn't want peace. And there's nothing I can do about that stuff. All I can go is like, you don't want peace? You don't want coexistence? You don't want uh, the future of like, built on like, being okay? Okay. Like, that's you, fam. Th that's you. That's you. I can't fix you. Like, I can't change this man's mind. There's a point in time where you realize that there's certain situations that other people do not want fixed, right? Shadow Rock is one of these individuals that doesn't want this situation to be fixed. I do. I do greatly. But when he doesn't want to do the right thing, I can't force him to do the right thing. I can't force him to do it. And I'm not going to.
Augie goes, all right, you don't want peace? I'm not gonna push it. Not gonna push it. You do you, fam. You do you. I'm not gonna force you to do something that even and no, it's the right thing to do. I'm not gonna force you to do it. Let's see if it's that. Let's see if it's the statue. Maybe something on the upper floor? I'll have to leave the old. Tear apart the bed. Rebuild it. Right? Maybe that was the issue. Because it said structure. So I was wondering if it's the bed. the freaking walls why was it the walls why was it the walls oh well it's fixed now Mm-hmm. 
Now we're gonna touch some. There we go. Like, I wish we can do something about that. I cheesed it. I cheesed it. Let's freaking go. Ah. <sighs> 
like that. I like what I do. Okay. That looks a lot more better. Click on the trigger there, Ace. Alright, so we got the blast steel armor. I'm so happy we got this done. Oh, while wow, you're hungry, pop. Did you get stuck again? on the power generator. All right, so in the near future, we're gonna end up making four tiny power generators. And surrounding them against the big one so we'll have more electricity for the base right so that's gonna be kind of really important and the bases changes are looking a lot more better and like a lot more fashionable too like I like what we did here and like we forgot one pillar we forgot a pillar let's fix that We're gonna rebuild like the statuette. And I guess like there's nothing really we can do this spring. Like in Power World that I had planned. Like it's almost three, so. Alright, we got 30 stones. Build back a uh, statue. I guess we'll put it over here now instead of in the house. Kind of cringy me like that, Devin. Stop talking to yourself, Devin. You will think you're crazy, Devin. Commander, stop it, Commander. <gasps> okay, Devin. Now what we're gonna end up doing. We can make enough cloth. Okay, yeah, bet. We'll build the snowman. After making the proper cloth. Hey, chat. Ever heard anything so cringy? Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> cringy, am I right? Like, not in a good way either. God dang, Disney. What have you done? <laughs> All right, so this live stream's coming to a close. Looks like these doors. Um, I will keep y'all up to date if there's any further changes to the stream, from like more changes to stream elements and all that. Thank y'all so much. Rachel will be back around five o'clock today. I have been your beloved commander. Until next time, I will see you in the next world. I am cutting off transmission. Have a nice night, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are on planet Earth in the middle.